Hey guys, welcome to Umist. Today we're going to talk about interval estimation and then confidence interval in inferential statistics. Remember that in our previous video, we talked about point estimation. Point estimation is using sample data to calculate a single value in order to serve as a best guess or best estimate of an unknown population parameter. For example, the sample mean x bar could be a point estimate of the population mean mu. However, x bar is a random variable as we discussed. It would not be proper to say that a random statistic is equal to some constant parameter mu. Even though we will calculate x bar to be equal to small x bar, where small x bar is a specific value, we will not be able to say that small x bar is equal to mu. Because big x bar is a random variable, instead, we say x bar is equal to mu with some uncertainty. Well then how can we measure that uncertainty? We can build up a range based on the estimate, which in our example is small x bar, and that is called an interval estimation. So an interval estimation is to calculate a possible interval of an unknown population parameter, like theta, in contrast to point estimation, which is a single number. Let's try an example to make sure you understand the idea of interval estimation. We're interested in estimating the true average height of all the population in Toronto. We collect a simple random sample of 200 students and find the average is 170 centimeters. Well, in this case, the point estimator is x bar and an estimate, which in this example is 170 centimeters, while an interval estimate is to report the interval so for example, in this case, it could be 160 centimeters to 180 centimeters. That is the height folds between 160 centimeters and 180 centimeters. Now, before we continue, let me introduce some notations of interval estimation to you guys. Low estimator is denoted by theta hat, the subscript of L, and high estimator is denoted by theta hat with a subscript of H. The interval estimator for the parameter theta is given by the interval with theta hat with subscript small l being the lower bound and theta hat with subscript h being the upper bound. So this is the low estimator and this is the high estimator. Notice that the length of the interval shows the precision of the estimation for theta. That is, the smaller the interval, the higher the precision. Now, we can go on to talk about confidence intervals. A confidence interval is a range of values that's likely to include a population value with a certain degree of confidence. There are two major components of a confidence interval. They are point estimator and margin of error. In the previous lectures, we've already talked about point estimator. So today, we'll be focusing on introducing margin of error. A margin of error tells you how many percentage points your results will differ from the real population value. A confidence interval is a range of values that's equal to the point estimate plus minus the margin of error. For example, a confidence interval is a random variable for the population parameter where the sample mean is given by 7 and the marginal error is given by 2.5. They want us to find the confidence interval estimate for the population mean. Well, we know confidence interval is equal to point estimate plus minus the margin of error. And over here, we've been given that the point estimate is 7 and the margin of error is 2.5. So really, it's just a plug and chug situation. This will be equal to, where you see this plus minus over here, this just means that the lower bound here will be 7 minus 2.5 since that's the lower value and the upper bound will be 7 plus 2.5 since that's the higher value. When we calculate this, we get 4.5 to 9.5. This here is our confidence interval. But what if the margin of error is not given in the question? How can we get a confidence interval of an estimator? The way to find a confidence interval would be different in different situations, which we will be looking at in our next video. But before we finish, Let's look at the last key term of confidence interval, the confidence level. A confidence level refers to the percentage of all possible samples that can be expected to include the true population parameter, usually denoted 
by 1 minus alpha. Note that alpha usually can take on 0 0.01, 0 0.05, and 0 0.10. You'll understand this better later on. This definition seems to be a bit complicated. So how can we understand this confidence level better? Well, suppose all possible samples were selected from the sample population. So we have sample 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way to the last sample. And each sample has a sample size equal to n. Each sample also has a point estimator. And the confidence interval for each sample has also been calculated. Then, if we take alpha equal to 0 0.05, then the confidence level is 95%. That is, we have a 95% confidence interval. This implies that 95% of the confidence intervals would include the population parameter, the true population parameter. Now remember, from earlier on, we learned that sample proportion, which is denoted by a p-hat, is just the number of individuals sampled who have a certain characteristic divided by sample size n. So for example, suppose we're interested in how many percent of citizens agree with a certain policy and we sample n equals 100 citizens randomly, we learn that 64 of these citizens agree with this policy. Then 64 divided by 100, which is equal to 64%, is the sample proportion. So this here is our sample proportion. How many percent of the citizens agree with one policy is the population proportion that we want to estimate? Now the sampling proportion is approximately normally distributed and we've learned all of this before, it's normally distributed because of central limit theorem with mean of sample proportion given by p and the standard error of the sample proportion given by square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. That is, p hat is approximately normal distributed with mean p and standard deviation square root of p times 1 minus p divided by n. We discussed some conditions for confidence interval in our earlier videos. Let's just review these. So the required conditions for constructing a confidence interval for population proportions are independence, randomness, and normality. Now let's talk about the confidence interval for population proportion. So the formula for a 1 minus alpha percent confidence interval for population proportion is given as follows. So it's p hat plus minus the z score multiplied by the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by square root of n. So here p hat is the sample proportion, so that's the estimator of p, and the square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat divided by n is the estimated standard error of p hat. We notice that it's slightly different from our standard error of sample proportion. So remember the standard error was given by square root of p times one minus p divided by n. What we just discussed in the sampling distribution section. So every p in this formula is replaced by p hat. That is because in practice, we don't know the population proportion p. Instead, we use p hat to estimate p. So this is called the estimated standard error of p hat. Now remember that z score, so that's z with the power of a star, is a critical value. So we covered this in our earlier video. It's the same critical value in population mean with known population standard deviation, because with our assumption, the sampling distribution of sample proportions is approximately normal. So with confidence level equals to 1 minus alpha, just like earlier on, the critical value is z to the power of star, which is a z-score such that the upper tail area under the standard normal curve is equal to alpha divided by 2. Again, just like our earlier video. So then the probability of z less than or equal to our z-score is equal to 1 minus our area alpha divided by 2. We can get the critical value by the z-score table. So here's a table for commonly used confidence levels. It's important to keep these in mind because it makes finding confidence intervals a lot easier and faster. Now let's talk about marginal error. Marginal error is just the z-score multiplied by the estimated standard error. So the population proportion p is our target parameter. Then again, our confidence interval is given by p hat plus minus the margin of error. Now let's try an example to check our understanding. We've been given that 747 out of 1,168 12th grade female students said they always use a seatbelt when driving. 
They want us to find the 95% confidence interval for the proportion that always use seatbelts. Now to answer this question, we have to first check our two assumptions. They are one, n times p hat is greater than 10. And two, n times one minus p hat is greater than 10. We have to check these both are greater than 10. So in order to do this, let's first find p hat. Well, we know p hat is equal to the sample that contained the characteristic divided by the sample size. So in this case, that would be 747 divided by 1,168. That gives us 0 0.64. Now we can check our assumptions. So this would be 1,168 multiplied by 0 0.64, which will give us 747, which is greater than 10. And this would be 1,168 times 1 minus 0 0.64. When you calculate this, we get 421, which is also greater than 10. So our assumptions hold, so we can move on to finding the confidence interval. Now remember again, we have n is equal to 1,168 already. And we also know that the critical value in this case is going to be 1.96. See, we've memorized the table, so this makes finding the confidence interval a lot faster. Now all we have to do is plug and chug. We know the formula for confidence interval is given by p hat plus minus the margin of error. So that's z score multiplied by p hat times one minus p hat, so that's under the square root divided by n. So when we plug and chug, we get 0 0.64 plus minus 1.96 times the square root of 0 0.64 times one minus 0 0.64 divided by 1168. When we calculate this, we get that our confidence interval is 0 0.612 to 0 0.668. Pretty easy, huh? So to summarize, today we reviewed sample proportions and we learned the conditions for the confidence interval for sample proportions. And we also learned how to compute confidence intervals for population proportions. So that's it for how to construct a confidence interval for population proportions. Now, some of you may be wondering what exactly a confidence interval tells us, or what does a confidence interval really even mean? Well, we're going to talk about all these things in our next video, so stay tuned.